So Desiree, CEO of Johnson Publishing. Big title, big job. What do you really do? Actually, uh, part of my role has really been to think about um, what Mr. Johnson created and think about how do we modernize that? How do we take these incredible assets that um, have been collected over 70 years and how do we uh, get people interested in those things? And so here's a simple thing that we came up with in terms of our strategy. We are the curator of the African American experience, past, present, and future. And really we came full circle and we said, we have this incredible opportunity to take our video archives, our five million pictures of African Americans since 1942, this cosmetics company, and these two publications that are number one and number three in the market and create the first lifestyle company that is inspired by the African American experience. Mm -hmm. You're a businesswoman. What are the metrics that you use to measure each of your divisions and what do you really focus on? Well, a couple of things. Certainly newsstand is important. Certainly what we're selling on, you know, because now it's newsstand and what you're selling on the digital platforms. What kind of traffic you're getting on your website. I mean, and now with with the websites, you're able to see, you know, what are they reading? How long are they staying? You know, how quickly are they leaving your site? You know, which pieces of the, of the um, website are doing better than, than others that might require us to then build a channel associated just with those topics? Um, advertising, you know, how are we doing with advertising? Certainly the world of publishing has changed so much mm -hmm. and that clients are really requiring us to be consultants to create the right dialogue with African Americans that are going to help these companies really be a part of the community and not just a quick sale because as we all know African Americans love their brands but we also like to see people involved in our communities and investing in our communities in a in a um, strategic and smart way. As a CEO of this company what's the biggest challenge you face right now? Part of the challenge has been is just the transition and really thinking about how we move the business forward and how we tell our story. I think, you know, we've redone all of the assets at this point in time, and it's now getting out and telling that story to, you know, this is on the media side, to uh, uh, consumer products companies and to service companies so that they understand what we have to offer because it's so different than the conversation we've had with them in the past. And then on the cosmetic side is a whole different story, right? Forty years ago, Mrs. Johnson started Fashion Fair Cosmetics and she did it because she saw her models from the Ebony Fashion Fair show mixing their own cosmetics because they didn't exist. Their colors did not exist. Certainly today, we've got a wide range of um, possibilities when we think about makeup. When women of color think about makeup, they've got a wide range of, of choices. And so, what would be special? Why would you be attracted to this brand? And we came up with this campaign called Say Yes. And what is say yes? Say yes to life, love, and beauty. And that we really feel that women of color have an opportunity to reclaim themselves and their beauty in whatever definition that means. We've got a whole group of women running this, this company and we're just starting with some of our first say yes parties where it really is a salute to women. These all women parties where we want to talk about what women are doing and have some fun with makeup at the same time.